Season 1 of Sex and the City Revival series, and just like that, had a lot going on. Jekyll and Hyde style personality shifts, Peloton related cardiac blunders, whatever you'd call what Charlotte was doing for 10 straight episodes. <laughs> Welcome to the Krusty Fox, and to catch you up before the impending start of And Just Like That Season 2, stay tuned for a snarky recap of all the major hijinks from last season. And if you like and subscribe, that might even include where we're up to with a certain Ms. Jones. Of all the original characters returning for And Just Like That, Miranda easily underwent the biggest change. No, not that one, because the only person getting hot flashes from it was me. Off screen, she quit her long fought for law firm partnership and enrolled as a human rights master's student. Which, nobility aside, was like trading a gold bar for a slap in the tits. Putting aside her newfound neurosis for all things politically correct, Miranda forged a new friendship with her professor, Naya. Possibly the only woman on the eastern seaboard patient enough to stand by while Mrs. Hobbs Brady dug and then flung herself into a Louisiana township's worth of racist potholes. Miranda was also maybe an alcoholic for a hot minute. But don't worry about that because the show certainly didn't. Elsewhere, wee baby Brady grew to become a fully committed teenage bonking enthusiast, and husband Steve became the soon-to-be ex, Mr. Hobbs Brady. Through no fault of his own, it must be said. Because Miranda's other big change was in realising that she was attracted to Carrie's non-binary podcast co-host, Che Diaz. After a quick extramarital finger blast up against Carrie's stove, Miranda eventually called time on her marriage to Steve, which freed her up to pursue a fling with the world's worst comedian. We left her with a newly restored mane of red hair, packed and ready to join Che in Los Angeles for a few months while they filmed a TV pilot. And after she gave up a sought after internship to do so. Expect a lot more of that in season two. I found it extremely difficult to care about most of what Charlotte had going on last season. We discovered that her marriage to Harry had gone the distance, and they were still living in largely undisturbed marital bliss, along with now teenage kids Lily and Rose. Aside from that, it was about as inconsequential and waspy as you'd expect, with a storyline about her befriending the coolest mom at school, Lisa Todd Wexley, somehow stretched over ten whole episodes. Rose came out as what we're left to assume is non-binary, and asked to be called Rock from now on, in what was easily Charlotte's biggest storyline of the season. Shaw mostly wrestled with letting go of her heteronormative plans for her daughters, when what she should have been worried about is what went wrong with her parenting for her kid to consider every possible name and still go with Rock. Rock refused to go through with their mother's elaborately designed the mitzvah, which led Charlotte to declare it as her own bat mitzvah instead, since she never got one as a later in life convert. Expect to see Charlotte continue to ham-fistedly struggle with Rock's gender identity exploration, and how much further she can crawl up Lisa's immaculately dressed ass in season 2. Mrs. Preston swiftly became Ms. Bradshaw again in season 1 when Mr. Big bit the big one. Cue a whole season of grieving before she finally dumped his remains over the side of the Parisian bridge they reunited on in the finale of Sex and the City. I'm willing to bet that half of that was cigar ash. She dipped her toe in the dating pool again with fellow widower Peter, but ultimately decided that it was all too much of a bittersweet bummer. Or got the hell out before he realised how much of a five alarm f up a single Carrie Bradshaw can be. You decide. Because of dwindling book sales and the rise of social media, Carrie found herself fumbling through an attempt to first be an Instagram influencer, and then acting as the clueless prude on Che and other co-host Jackie's progressive podcast, X, Y, and Me. When Che leaves for LA, Jackie is swiftly ejected in favour of a solo show for Ms. Bradshaw. Can you guess what it's called? I bet you can't. So, till next time... 
I'm Carrie Bradshaw, and this is Sex in the City. Ooh, you suck! Carrie's new friendship was with real estate broker and painfully obvious Samantha stand-in Seema, whose efforts to help Carrie find bigless apartments were rendered pointless by her eventual return to her classic one. After a practically unheard of period of suffering in silence, Carrie also underwent hip surgery for an undiagnosed congenital issue. Unfortunately, at no point did anybody suggest a brain scan to find out what else is wrong for her to be the way that she is. But it did start a judgmental feud with Miranda, who left her friend to tip a cup of piss over herself in favour of letting Che operate her like a screamy hand puppet. They resolved things again by the last episode, but who knows whether it'll rear its head again. Our final glimpse of the Widow Bradshaw came as she had a bit of elevator-based afternoon delight with podcast producer Franklin. A, let's not understate this, significant upgrade from her gross dead husband. But one unlikely to stick because in season 2, long-suffering masochist Aidan Shaw is back on the scene. At this point, he's only got himself to blame. Stanford and enemy-turned-husband Anthony did return for varying amounts of the first season, but with one fairly obvious caveat. Due to the death of actor Willie Garson, Stanford was written out after a few episodes. His character did a burger, which is to say he left a note for Anthony asking for a divorce, and then flew off to Tokyo to manage a hot new influencer. And that was that. Whether he'll get a mention in Season 2 remains to be seen. Event planner Anthony, on the other hand, parlayed his talents into his hot fella's bakery. Which, let's be honest, you and I would both have full loyalty cards for. He got more consistent dialogue than he ever did in Sex and the City, but it remains to be seen whether he'll get any actual development in the next season. Sam was, in my opinion, pretty vindictively written out of the series. When Kim Cattrall's well-publicised and volcanically hot hatred for Sarah Jessica Parker resulted in her not being asked to return. She had an off-screen falling out with Carrie over money, when the latter decided to drop Samantha Jones PR as her publicist. The former then flounced off to London and went largely incommunicado with the three remaining ladies. A series of actions so out of character that I would have had an easier time believing it if they'd said she'd fallen down an elevator shaft. She sent flowers to Big's funeral and exchanged a few brief texts with Carrie, but it wasn't until the season finale that they finally agreed to meet up for a drink. Now, we know that Kim Cattrall isn't returning full time for season 2, but we do know that there's a cameo in the offing, likely in the finale. So keep your eyes peeled for that and feel free to wildly speculate about whether it could lead to something more. Early signs will include pigs flying and hell freezing the f over. And just like that, you're all caught up. Which of these season 1 storylines do you hope gets picked back up for season 2? And do you have any predictions for how things are likely to play out when the ladies return? As usual, let me know in the comments below. Either way, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if you can't be good, be crusty.